Hi, and welcome to the first episode of this Power BI Masterclass. This is truly a complete end-to-end -end masterclass in Power BI, which is completely free and available to everybody on YouTube. And not only that, you can practice along. It's completely hands-on. I will provide link to all the exercise files to help you practice and master the skills. And also when I'm explaining topics, the main focus will be on understanding the why, why you should do something, why you should choose a particular chart, why you should do a particular technique. The idea is for you to become a confident business intelligence analyst or a data analyst by the end of this series. Not only you will be able to mention Power BI as a skill on your CV, you're not only you will be able to build a career in Power BI, but you can also get more credibility by passing the Power BI certification. This whole training, this whole course will enable you to do that. If you want to get notified as I upload more and more videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. And without further ado, let's jump in and get started. In this video, we're going to look at four key things. We're going to learn what is business intelligence. So if you are getting started new to this space, you should understand what is business intelligence and also should be able to explain it in your own words. So I'll, I'll use simple definitions and words which you can use and remember and then repeat yourself. So the idea is you should be comfortable talking about these things. I'm not saying you have to learn a lot of theory, but these are the most important terms you should be familiar with, and you should be able to talk about these and explain these in your own words. So what is business intelligence? What is Power BI? What are the key components of Power BI? And then we will look at why Power BI is so popular and why you should learn Power BI. So let's jump in. So what is BI? So BI or business intelligence, it's a collection of processes, tools, and infrastructure that helps businesses make data-driven decisions. So it's not uh, business intelligence or BI is not one particular tool. It's a collection of tools. It's a collection of techniques and processes and infrastructure that helps the organizations become data savvy and help them use their organization data to derive meaningful insights and then make informed decisions based on those insights. This whole thing is business intelligence. Next, why actually businesses are investing in business intelligence? Why there is so much demand for business intelligence and the relevant skills in that field? Because there is data everywhere. Every organization has loads and loads of data. The aim is here or bi basically what it does is it allows the organizations to leverage that data to help make informed decisions so some of the benefits of business intelligence include speeding up and improving decision making improving internal business processes uh, spotting business problems increasing operational efficiency identifying emerging business and market trends and driving higher sales and new revenue so overall basically increase profitability reduce costs become more efficient be, become more competitive and become more agile and take the guesswork out of decision making so business intelligence allows businesses to become smart businesses to become businesses which are using their own data to make informed decisions. Now, what is the process of BI? What does this look like basically? So if we have to generalize it, then it could be sort of stated in five different steps and it always starts with data collection. So usually within businesses, data sits in so many different silos. So they might have a finance system, a HR system, and then they might have suppliers management system. They might have a customer relationship system. So they're CRM and they have there's so many different systems within organizations. And sometimes there's data which is entered manually and collected in spreadsheets. Um, so, so many different sources of data. The For business intelligence, you want to bring all that data in one place so that you could have one version of the truth and reporting could be done on that. So data collection, data gathering 
is the first step. This is where you identify what are the right sources of data that you want to bring in and what granularity of like data you want to collect for each uh, source basically. So you decide on those things and you bring in that data and collect it in one place. Then next step is the data preparation. This is where you clean your data. So the reality is that data always needs some sort of preparation. So whether it is because of manual entries, because of um, sort of incompatibility between systems, the way dates are recorded, the currencies are recorded, there's so many things and simple things like names of columns and all those things. So you basically have to always clean your data, reshape it, integrate data from different sources into one place. So this is all part of data preparation and then you create a data model that is suitable for reporting. Uh, it allows you to do your reporting efficiently. The next step is data analysis. Now this is again a critical step. This is where you create or calculate insights out of your data. This is where you will start to investigate sort of further into what is there available in your data, what sort of insights and calculations you can do it, do on it, and then this becomes the sort of source step for data visualization. And once you have your data analysis, you've done your calculated columns, you've added or sort of um, improved on the raw data that you had, basically you make it further more usable from reporting perspective. So that's what you do when you look at trends and you analyze, you do calculations and all those things in the data analysis step. And then the next step is data visualization. And this step, you basically want to show the key things or key KPIs and key results and data in a form that could be easily consumed by the end user. And then they can make decisions based around that. So the idea is it should be easy to consume and it should be meaningful as well. So that you try to do all that. So data visualization is a big part of BI. And sometimes um, it's people think it's all about data visualization, but actually the steps before visualization are, if not more equally important, because if your data is not clean, if it's not prepared well, the model's not right, and you don't have the right analysis done on it, no amount of beautification of your visualization will create the results that you want. So make sure equal emphasis is put on those steps as well. And the reality is that the data preparation usually will take more time than data visualization. So if you are somebody who's learning this new, then you have to make sure that you put enough emphasis on learning the data preparation, data collection, data analysis side of things as well, and not just focus on data visualization. Last but not the least, the idea is to share the insights. So distribute your reports and share in a secure way and at the right level so that people get only access to what they need to see and should be seeing. So this is all like end-to-end -end process and it might look like it's a very um, sort of process which goes from one step to another kind of thing. But the thing is in reality, when you're working, there's a lot of to and fro as well. So you might do be on a data analysis step and you realize that you know you found some issues with the data you might need to go back and fix those issues in the data preparation step so similarly when you start visualizing you need oh you think oh okay i need this calculated columns or this type of measures and all those things you might need to go back and do that as well so it's a bit of to and fro between these steps and uh, mostly data collection you will do once kind of thing you may not do it repeat every day but data preparation also, if you're doing for the whole organization, it's done one, but then whenever new sources come in, then you might have to do additional preparation. But this is all kind of, as I said, to and fro. It's not a very step-by-step uh, -step from one step to another kind of serial process, okay? So those are the five key steps in the business intelligence process. And next we look at what is Power BI. And if you look at the Power BI website, Microsoft basically says that Power BI is the bridge that bridges the gap between data and decision making. So at one end, we have the data land where we have all this data sitting in so many different sources in raw data in SQL Server or in Excel files in CSV files and all these data there. 
And then at one end is the decision makers who need the insights from this data to help make them informed decisions. So basically what Power BI does is it provides you the components and tools that you can use to take this raw data and convert it into meaningful insights and share those insights with the decision makers. So this is Power BI. And another key thing to remember is it's a self-service BI tool. So in this case, it is so easy to use that even managers and decision makers can do some sort of analysis at their end and they can create their own reports and visualizations and play around with the um, report that has been created. So there are so many things that they can do uh, and create use. So it's very hands-on, it's really easy to learn and it allows the organizations to become data-driven organizations. So Power BI is not one tool. Power BI is a platform and it's a collection of tools. And one of the uh, sort of things, if you think in terms of how it progresses, so we have the data sources. So in order to start the process, the first idea is to collect the data. And usually you will go through a process of using the Power BI desktop, which is an application you install on your Windows machine. So remember, Power BI is only available for Windows machines at the moment. So you install it and then that, that's where you start the process. And this is where bulk of your development happens on Power BI desktop, starts with ingesting the data. And then rest of the steps, we look in the BI process, including the data cleaning and then analysis and visualization. All those things happen in this Power BI desktop. So bulk of your learning time, if you're getting started, will be to learn and master the Power BI desktop. And then from there, these reports get pushed on to the Power BI service, which is a cloud-based service. And from here, these reports can be shared and then they can be consumed in form of embedded apps, web apps, or Power BI mobile. There are so many different ways that these reports can be consumed. So the platform allows you to do this whole process and provides you one place or one shop for the whole Power BI process from data ingestion to sharing the insights and letting the end users consume it as and when and where they need it. The next thing we want to look is, let's just look a bit detailed into the Power BI desktop. So the Power BI desktop consists of three key components. So one is the Power Query Editor. This is the main kitchen of Power BI. This is where you get your hands dirty with the data, you collect the raw data, and then you prepare your data where it consists of cleaning the data, integrating of your data, and then you load it into your data model. And then Power Pivot and DAX, this is where you build relationships between the tables, you build your data model, and then you calculate columns or you calculate measures and all those things that will allow you to visualize your data effectively. And from there, we have the power view. This is where the visualization happens. And this is where you create your reports and charts, and then you publish it onto the Power BI service, which we saw on the last slide. And from there, it could be consumed by the end users on Power BI mobile or web apps or embedded apps and you know other ways as well. Even or we can have a, instead of a Power BI service, sometimes some companies and organizations tend to use their own reporting server as well. And there's an option to do that as well. So these are the key components and especially the Power BI desktop. Remember three things, Power Query Editor, Power Pivot or Dandex, and then Power View for visualization. Now we're going to look at how popular is Power BI at the moment? What are the trends like? So this chart here is from Google Trends website. This is where you can look at trends for any keywords across the world or across a particular country or a region that you want to explore. These are stats for worldwide trends on search terms of Power BI, Tableau, and Click. So those are the three key players in the BI space. And you can see here the blue line is for Power BI and how in the last five years, there's been a gradual upward trend and it's just becoming stronger and stronger whereas DAP Tableau is almost flatlined and it's much lower in terms of when compared to Power BI and Click obviously is again almost flatlined or actually downward trending slightly and it's nowhere near Power BI. So Power BI 
is the most searched term on Google because there is so much demand for it. So people who are learning, they are searching for it. People who want to implement their organizations, they are searching for it. Um, so there's so many different reasons why people might be searching, but there is more search for Power BI when compared to Tableau and Click. Next, we want to look at what are the job opportunities in terms of Power BI skills. And now I have searched specifically for Power BI and not just for business intelligence or data analytics, where you will see a lot more jobs actually. And I think it might be a better way to look at it, but I just wanted to show that if you just even look at Power BI, there are so many jobs in UK at the moment. There are more than 22,000 jobs on LinkedIn and also on in United States, more than 33,000 jobs which are live on LinkedIn where the Power BI is the key skills key skill required. So there is a lot of demand for Power BI skills because a lot of organizations are adapting it and they need people to make the best use of it. Now, Gartner, I don't know if you've heard about it. So Gartner is an organization which compares the various participants or members in a particular category and then creates this quadrant of leaders, challengers, visionaries, and niche players and ranks them, okay? And this here in 2022, this is from March 2022, and Microsoft is the leader. You can see it's way ahead of its competition. There is then the Salesforce and Click in that quadrant. Now, Microsoft, I know it doesn't say Power BI there, but in terms of analytics and business intelligence platforms, this is specifically for that. In that, Microsoft's main key platform for BI is Power BI. So it does play a big role in Microsoft being a leader in that space. So again, it's because Microsoft is a leader they, and Power BI is a key tool in the market. There is so much demand for it that, you know, is, is fueling this whole thing around more and more trained and skilled people required with Power BI. So why there is so much demand for Power BI? What is special about Power BI? The first thing is it's free to download and try. So Power BI desktop, you can download and play around with it. There is no charges for it and there is no time limit for it, like in terms of one month free or anything. It's lifetime free. So you can practice to your heart's content. That's one thing because that makes, that provides easy access for, for new people, new learners to try it and see if they like it, then they can practice and master it. Next is the um, UI, basically the user interface is quite familiar for existing Office users. So if you have used any of the Microsoft Office applications, Word, Excel, especially Excel, then the UI will be quite familiar for you. So that also helps you to get started quickly. Next thing is the, the features and functionalities are really, really powerful. The number of connectors available to connect with different um, data sources. So you can connect with more than 150 different types of data sources as of recording of this video. And then there are um, sort of a really powerful Power Query engine, which allows you to manipulate your clear, clean and integrate your data. And then if you want advanced functionality, there is M language as well. So you can even do a lot more things in there in terms of functionalities available. Then we have really powerful engine available for DAX, which is the for data analysis expressions, and that basically allows you to calculate columns, to calculate measures, to do analysis on your data. And then we have a really powerful visualization engine called Power View, which allows you to create really beautiful, meaningful charts and visualizations and reports and dashboards. So it's basically end-to-end -end BI tool, which uh, has really powerful functionalities, but easy to learn and master. Another reason for its popularity is that it's backed by the fastest growing BI cloud services. So Azure basically by Microsoft and it's growing really pop, uh, quickly and it's very powerful and it allows the organizations to scale things really quickly. So again, because of that also, it's fueling the whole growth of Power BI. See, the Power BI service is built on top of that, those cloud services. 
It's uh, another reason is the low cost per user. So Power BI when compared to Tableau and Click is a lot more cheaper. It costs around $10 per user per month. And there are so many other different types of license options available as well, but it's much cheaper when compared to its competition. Uh, another thing is the monthly update cycle. So Power BI is constantly being updated, new functionalities being added so uh, consistently that there is a monthly update. And I will request you to look at and follow the Microsoft updates regarding this to stay up date with it, up to date with it. But in the beginning, when you get started, don't worry too much about the really latest features and all those things. You want to learn the core functionality and start practicing. The sooner you start practicing, the better you will become at it. So don't keep try to learn each and every functionality. Try to learn the most important functions and then start working and playing around with data and creating your own reports. That's the best way to learn and master this tool. And that's what we're gonna do in this whole course on YouTube. So in this video, we learned what is business intelligence? What is Power BI? What are the key components of Power BI? And also we looked at why there is so much demand for Power BI and why you should invest in and learn Power BI. If you have any questions regarding the contents of this video, then do leave a comment. And if you want to get notified of the next video, then do subscribe and hit the bell icon. In the next video, we're going to learn how to download and install the Power BI desktop and set it up the right way. And also do a walkthrough of the complete user interface, looking at the Power Query Editor, and then also the three main views within the Power BI desktop, including the report view, the data view, and the relationship view. So in the meantime, keep on learning and I will see you next time.